So Ian, give us a bit of a background on yourself and your journey to founding Kurin Organics. Right, so um, I'm Ian, uh, 27 this year, and I graduated out of UQ two years ago. Uh, I came uh, from I Singapore, uh, and I wasn't really expecting to start a startup here, but it was really when I bought a new car when I graduated, when I started looking into cleaning products, and I realized that there was a big gap in uh, commodity cleaning products like detergents. And so that really sparked the whole discussion on detergents. And my co-founder is actually my first housemate when I moved to Australia. And he had a PhD in biochemistry. So I, I rang him up at six and I said, I've got an idea, let's try this out. And he said, yeah, let's, let's try it out. And you know, um, long story short, that's where we are today. That's so exciting. Um, so you went from car products and then where are you today? So where we are today, uh, we started off doing customizable luxurious laundry detergents. Uh, we thought there was a market there for a premium product, but COVID happened and through it all, we, we lost uh, soap supplies during that, that you know, uh, heat season uh, because everyone was just hoarding detergent and cleaning supplies. And so we, we started to innovate a bit. We thought it's either we wait out for six months and not do anything, or we could try something else within that space. And because as founders, we had a natural understanding and interest for denim products, uh, we, tried, we tried playing around with different formulas and eventually we created the Inigo Denim Wash, which is the world's first soap-free luxury denim wash. Wow. Oh, that's exciting. So what about iLab? I know you were part of that cohort. What was that experience like for you? What did that do for Korean Organic? Right. Uh, it was the first accelerator that both of us went to as founders. Uh, it was an amazing opportunity. I have never expected that as an alumni of the school that I'll still be able to engage in entrepreneurial activities like iLab. Uh, it was a bit daunting at first being international, uh, competing uh, with locals and people from around the world. I think it's hard when uh, sometimes we we have to find ways to communicate more effectively and pitch the idea more more convincingly that we otherwise wouldn't be able to, coming from a very conservative Asian society, uh, that really gave us a, a push in the direction we needed. I think iLab has gave us the springboard that we really needed to push Korean to the next level. And what's next for Korean now? Uh, we are set to launch in Singapore on the 27th and 28th of November. That's our official Singapore launch. Uh, we are starting there because we have some key retailers that we are going to sign on in Singapore. And, uh, Singapore is kind of the hub that we see Korean organics expand into the Asia Pacific region. So uh, while we are working very hard here in Australia, we are trying to hit the major fashion markets like Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, uh, and Sydney and Melbourne, of course. And then what about thinking about your high school days? Did you ever consider entrepreneurship as a career path then? Definitely. When I was 15, uh, I remember jotting down uh, our teachers asked us to draw a mind map of, you know, what, what's your dream career? And I draw myself. It wasn't a startup. You know, I was, I was toying the idea of starting my own bar. Um, <laughs> but I think I've always had that, that entrepreneurial drive in me. I started my first business when I was 19, uh, back in Singapore as well. Oh, wow. And then what about, um, so school students, maybe you didn't have any sort of um, training in your school in entrepreneurship, but how do you think that could be a positive thing for young people? I think it's, it's an amazing and tremendous opportunity for young people. And I say that because uh, I've started relatively young and the benefits of starting young and educating uh, uh, students and, and youth at that age is the, the failure, the, the chance to learn from failures is incredible. I think that it provides such a safe ground for trying out new experiences, new concepts, new ideas without the commitment that you would have for example, if you have a family or you have prior work commitments, uh, that might be a, a big barrier to you trying out something new and really taking that risk. Um, and also, I think educating uh, younger people about entrepreneurship helps to develop them, not just as a consumer of products, but as a producer of products as well. And I think that that's, a, that's an amazing opportunity there. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Ian, for giving up your time and chatting with us. Not at all. Thank you for having me, Risa.